Hey, good. How are you? I'm good, man. So you guys, you're on set, obviously. You're you're working right now. Well, I'm actually in the car. I'm headed to. I have to go to um, PR, like uh, you know, post sound stuff, and then I'm going to work. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, so this, well, since we, since we don't have too much time, let's get right into it. This is going to get printed the week of the Thanksgiving uh, Day episode, so, you know, if you give me any spoilers for the next couple of weeks, it's not going to be a big deal at all. But um, but I kind of okay. want I, I kind of wanted to start um, with you getting the role, which I guess would be just shortly after Flash Forward probably ended. Uh, it was actually during Flash Forward. I was shooting Flash Forward, and... Uh, and it just sort of came out of the, out of the blue, you know. They had they had everybody set already, um, uh, except their Dave. And, and I, I had done a comedy pilot for ABC the year before with Kelsey Grammer, and, and I guess they they thought I was kind of funny to people at ABC, and, and just offered me the role. And obviously, they knew Flash Forward was on its way out, and. So I, I sort of took it as a sign, and <laughs> you know maybe I, maybe I should take this job. And you know, after meeting with um, David uh, Cast and Jimmy Tarson to read the script, it was kind of a no-brainer. Did you know Flash Forward was on its way out, or did you find out because they said maybe you should do Happy Endings? Um, you know, we all kind of the writing was on the wall. Obviously, that show was so expensive to make. Um, and the numbers just weren't there. Uh, so, you know, I think everybody was sort of at that point kind of look, starting to look for new jobs. But uh, I was the first to sort of spring out. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think actually me doing that because sort of let everybody else on the show know that it wasn't going to happen, unfortunately. <laughs> Right. Uh, I love that show. I think it was a great show. Yeah, it was a cool concept. It was it was too bad it couldn't. Uh, I don't know, but I guess it worked out for you pretty well. And at the end of the day, yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. So you said you said they they did you not even audition for the role? They just wanted you, and, and you just said okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I, it was really one of the first times in my life. Well, actually, the only other time I didn't have to audition was for Flash Forward, but I. Audition for John Cho's part on Flash Forward, and um, mm. originally my character was uh, supposed to be an old man, and David Goyer had been down the road with him, you know, on a couple of things, and uh, and he just changed the part for me. So it was one really lucky thing after another. And how was that? How was that? Sorry, which part changed for you, Flash Forward or Dave? Now, uh, Flash Forward, right? Okay. And, and also Dave, I think a little. Originally, Dave was supposed to be a nice Jewish kid. A Jewish kid, okay. <laughs> and then when I got the part, they were like, well, maybe he'll be half Jewish. And then, uh, you know, I clearly do not look like remotely could have any Jewish in my blood. So <laughs> I decided to drop it. <laughs> well, how has the character grown? Because obviously now you're in the third season and, and you must be a lot more comfortable. You know the character. You know Dave pretty well. The writers now know Dave pretty well. You know, David's not writing... I guess, and the writing team, not writing a new character. You have you have this guy now. So how has that changed? Well, you know, the, the whole first season, obviously, with any show, um, and I think especially for us, it, it, it shows it kind of have to find itself, find its legs. And, you know, for me personally and for the character of Dave, I mean, we, the whole first season, we just dealt with that being left at the altar relationship stuff mm -hmm. and didn't really get the five the funny in Dave, I think. And um, I definitely think last year we started to crack into actually that, you know, Dave may actually be the kind of the craziest character of all of them <laughs> in, in, in its own weird way. And, um, you know, it's great to finally kind of move past the initial premise of the show and be able to move into character. And now it's kind of moving back from what I hear about this season. Not a, not not the lack of humor, but more you and Alex, or you and Alicia, rather. Yeah, you know, they. Um, uh, it's no secret that Dave and Alex are going to be back together at the beginning of the season. That's kind of the whole first first episode deals with, and um, I think it's great because you know I think Alicia would would say the same thing that I just said about her character, and that. You know, second season is when they really started to explore the funny of Alex, and and I think now to see these two characters together is just going to be really fun for the audience and something that they haven't seen yet because we've just been in a strike. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun. And how are you and Alicia doing together now? You're obviously getting to play off each other a lot more than you probably used to. Yeah, we work kind of right now, and uh, uh, we're having so much fun. It's just, it, it, I, I just think the two of 
Dave and Alex, the two of them together, are just a really funny couple, and uh, they've really given us some great stuff. I mean, this for sure is my favorite season so far for my character personally, and they've just given us really great stuff. I can't wait for people to see it. And why, why is that? What 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 have they brought to Dave that, that makes you so happy about it? More humor? More? Are you more of a focal point of the show? I mean, you know, it's an ensemble show, and and. So we all have our different episodes where we have the A story. But, you know, I just like the fact that Dave is in, this year isn't in so much distress. I mean, he is in his own weird, weird different distresses like he does. He sort of focuses on strange things and becomes obsessed with them. But, um, you know, it's coming from a much sort of happier place for those two characters, and that's a lot of fun to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to say, I heard you didn't like the love triangle angle as much last season. You you were kind of hoping to to get rid of that, and I, uh, you must be glad that that happened. <laughs> well, you know, it's just personally, uh, from an actor's standpoint, you know, I much rather and, and enjoy playing the funny stuff. And for me, it's it's a challenge and it's gr- a growth because I don't come from that world. I come from the sort of drama world, you know, mostly. And, mm. and so for me, when I have funny stuff to play, I feel like I'm really learning and being challenged and, and that stuff, it always ends up kind of going the way of hearts and drama, which I know every show needs, but just for my own little selfish actor brain, I like to play the comedy better. Right. Well, speaking about the actor brain, so what's your process when you get a script? Do you, do you have a place that you read it? Do you read it immediately? Do you highlight your lines? How do you go through a script? Um. Well, uh, you know, it sort of evolved on this show and, and this is the first job that I've had that uh, that I get to play the same character for a while. I mean, I've had other shows, but never have I gone to a second season. You know, so I've never, I've only had like 13 or 22 episodes, and that was about it. But um, you know, I feel like with comedy, it's really good to keep it fresh. I don't want to, I don't really try to overwork it too much. And uh, the nature of our show is is so loose, and, and we improv a lot that. I don't want to get too married to um, the stuff, so I keep it pretty loose. I mean, I, I used to be that actor that worked, you know, through the script over and over and over again before I get set. And sort of, I, I think my castmates who come from improv comedy and sketch comedy have, have taught me that, you know, sometimes it's a lot funnier just to keep it real loose, and it kind of keeps you open to, um, you know, to what's kind of thrown your way when you're doing scenes. What uh, is there any improv scenes that you were surprised that maybe made it into the the final cuts from last season that, that people would recognize, at least for your character? From last from last season, I mean, I guess we're going back uh, quite know, a ways it, now. It, it, yeah, it, it's so much that, and we really do improv a lot, and we'll add little tags that kind of every scene has a little bit of something that we've thrown in, so nothing really stands out in particular. I mean, I, I, I you know. I just think that uh, we kind of bring our own language to the show sometimes, and, and I think that's what people respond to, and it's, it's just nice to be a part of that. Well, speaking about your own language, let's go there. Let's go to the Thanksgiving Day episode, because I hear you're 116th Navajo, as we learned a couple, uh, I think it was this season on the show, <laughs> but uh, but I hear you yeah. kind of go off into your own thing, I guess, which will be next week's yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, Dave, um, Dave manages to experience the entire plight of the Native American <laughs> in in one twenty two minute episode of Happy Ending, pretty funny. How do you how do you, how is that for you as a challenge? Because you want to you kind of you want it to play it funny, obviously, but you also want to you know give give the culture some respect as well. So that's got to be a happy a weird balance to to try and do. Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, he totally Dave c- completely believes in this, this fact that he's one sixty Navajo, and the idea of the episode is that. He wants to show everybody what an authentic Thanksgiving would be, so he sets out to get a, a, some quahog clams, which apparently were you, you know eaten at the first Thanksgiving, and that sort of starts the adventure. So, you know, the one thing about Dave that I really love is that he's really earnest. You know, he's not. Um, he may be a little bit dim sometimes, but he's always he's very earnest, and he he believes in what he's doing, and that's kind of what the comedy of, of that character is for me, and, and I think that's directly translated into this episode. 
you know, so I, I definitely think that that earnesty is what sort of avoids it, mocking a culture or using that, you know, to make fun of. It's not, it's more about how he reacts to it, it's the thing to make fun of rather than the culture itself. Right. Right. And I, so if that's the A story, the episode of B story here is this reality show where you are really bad on camera, as we've learned from the commercial at that one point, and, and you got this crazy wig and everything. So why don't, why don't you talk about that for a second? Yeah, so uh, the, the B story of the episode is that uh, the gang, most of the gang actually met on a reality television show. And it's pretty, I mean, we, we even acknowledge the fact that I think Penny has the line, like, how come we've never talked about the fact that we met on a reality TV show? Um, and it's, it's funny because, you know, the Dave Cameron thing is um, is, is a storyline from, third, I don't know if it was the second season, I guess, that I just loved. And um, I love that quirk about him. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, you get to see how uncomfortable Dave is dealing with the, uh, that sort of late adolescence as well as being uncomfortable in front of the camera. So <laughs> is that easy uh, to it's act? really funny. And Heart, oh, like, yeah. To act bad? That's easy for you? Okay. <laughs> well, I, that, sounds, yeah. that came out wrong, but you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I mean, look, it's fun when, when there's a challenge and they, I, or, sorry, I'm just checking into Paramount. Give me one sec. Yeah, sure. Um, it, it is, it's, it is, it's fun when, um, you know, when you get to play awkward or I think so much in comedy is, is, um, is, is not being afraid to, uh, look silly and, and, and be vulnerable. And, and I, I think I really, you know, we always get there. Thank you. And I think I, you know, I try to incorporate that in the days. Mm-hmm. Well, since you're pulling in, into the lot, I don't, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I do want to talk about just for a second here. You play another Dave in a movie called Teddy Bears. Ned Beatty's in it. That's got to be pretty cool. Yes, that was, it was really great. I actually saw it, um, for the first time the other day, going to a screening and, uh, yeah, it was funny. I, I got the, the role in the movie and I said, does he have, does he have to be called Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm having, you know, people stop me in the street and stuff now and they're like, Dave! <laughs> and, you know, Dave is, is, uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's a funny, it's one of those funny names. I don't know why, but I find it funny. So I, I asked if I could not be Dave, but uh, they were pretty married to it. And, uh, and yeah, the movie was a great experience. It's a really great cast. It's me, um, Melanie Linsky, Jason Ritter, Gillian Jacobs, uh, Anna O'Reilly, and David Krumholtz, and obviously Ned Beatty. And mm-hmm. it, it was so much fun. We, we shot in Joshua Tree in the desert um, in, in May. And, uh, really on a shoestring budget and the movie just turned out really great. And what's it about briefly? Uh, basically there's three couples, me, uh, me and Anna O'Reilly are a couple, Gillian Jacobs and Jason Ritter are a couple and David Krumholtz and Melanie Linsky are a couple. And, uh, David Krumholtz, his character before the movie begins, his mother dies of cancer. And when the movie is starting, we're taking him to this house just after the funeral uh, in Joshua Tree that we all used to go to and just, you know, to cheer him up and, and, and take him out. And uh, we get to the house for this little vacation and the night starts for having dinner and from all the character stands up to make a toast and says, you know, thank you all for for taking care of me. I could have done this without you. And, and I think really the one thing that would really make me heal is, is if I slept with all the women here. <laughs> all the women in this group. And so the movie is sort of this kind of dark comedy, sort of reminiscent of a, I don't know. Um, it, it's just about this sort of tough time in this guy's life and this odd fascination that he has with being loved and cuddled by all the women that he, you know, loves in his life. And it's sort of about how all of us deal with that during the week in Joshua Tree. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's got a big chill kind of feel to it. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just a really nice little movie. Nice. So before I let you go, we got to do something called five questions. Five quick questions, one word answers. One word answers. One word okay. answers. TV or film? Film. Lennon or McCartney? Lennon. Comedy or drama? Comedy. Role you're most proud of? Wow. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> that's not a role that I play. No, I know. <laughs> uh, I, I would say Dave, you know, because that's the one that most people have seen. Dave, Dave from Happy Endings, not Dave from Teddy Bears. Yeah. Right, gotcha. In one word, Happy Endings. Uh, insanity. Nice.